This is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today. This episode is about local news in Birmingham and the West Midlands. The first story comes from Coventry. And it was about a teenager that was chased down and murdered outside a BP garage on the 31st of March 2020. I covered a series of stabbings that occurred in Coventry within a six month period. Several teenagers lost their lives and I documented them stories up until several people were jailed for their murders. In this case, several men have been jailed, but not for murder, but for manslaughter. They stabbed to death 19-year-old Pavandeep Dorda, who suffered a fatal injury to his leg after he was set upon by the men who were wearing masks and armed with baseball bats and knives that occurred outside the BP garage on Lockhurst Road in the Holbrooks area of Coventry. Jason Cornwall, 34, Riley Kavanagh, 20 years old, Kane McCarran, 18 years old, and Ethan Lilly, aged 24, all from Coventry, denied taking part in the fatal attack. But following an eight-week trial in October last year, they were all found guilty of manslaughter. Today, Jason Cornwall was jailed for 11 years, and Kavanagh from Drake Street and McCarran were both jailed for nine years. During the trial, the jury heard that the attack was planned and there was a retaliation after Pavandeep's friend, Zakia Shanala, got into a row in the area the day before that resulted in a brick being thrown at an Audi A3. The police investigation discovered messages sent from one of the suspect's phones to a friend of Pavandeep saying one of your friends will end up dead and this appears to have been triggered by the vandalism at Lily's home in the early hours of the 31st of March. At around 11pm on the same day, Zakia was at the BP garage when a dark grey Ford Cougar on false plates arrived and a group of men got out. The CCTV showed they were armed with weapons, including baseball bats, poles and knives. They attacked Pavandeep, knocking him to the ground before grabbing a bag that he was carrying and leaving him fatally wounded at the scene. Despite the best efforts of paramedics, he died in hospital a short time later. The post-mortem concluded that he died from a stab wound to the thigh and the men also chased after his friend Zakia in the Cougar and rammed his car in a nearby station before smashing the windows with a base. With a base. Zakia was robbed of his bag also and jacket and stabbed in the foot. The men left and the Cougar was later found in grassland in the Willing Hall area and rigorous analysis of CCTV footage from the area and mobile phone records linked all of the men and showed that there was in the Cougar on the time of the attack. Lily Cornwall and McCarran were also convicted of robbery in relation to the attack on Zakia. Kavanagh was not convicted of that charge. Two further men, Lucas Hutchinson and a second man who can't be named for legal reasons, were convicted of assisting an offender in relation to burning out the car after the fatal attack. It was completely burned out and they found it on CCTV and it showed the two men were involved. The 4CID Detective Inspector Stuart Mobley said, This vicious attack was sparked by an apparently low-level dispute that spiralled into such violence that a mother has been robbed of her child. Today, our thoughts go to the victim's family and I can only hope that this sentencing will bring them some comfort at this upsetting time. Knife crime and violence takes place in the community every day and we have to do something about it and to directly get involved and to try to stop them from evading justice. And sadly, this is ever too common an occurrence nowadays where gangs are jumping out of vehicles, attacking young people and they're sadly losing their lives before they even become an adult. So rest in peace to Pavandeep and my condolences to his family and friends. In this other story, there's a very similar. A young 16-year-old boy was ran down by two men and murdered in Birmingham. Liam Mooney was on the back of a moped when it was hit by Paul Briggs and Dale Sharpen, aged 26 and 31. They have now been jailed for 20 years altogether for killing the 16-year-old who was deliberately rammed off the motorcycle last year. Liam Mooney was travelling down Rocky Lane in Perry Bar, Birmingham at 7.20 on March the 22nd when he was hit by the oncoming car. Police officers responded and tried to give him CPR at the scene and he was rushed to hospital but he died later on. The court heard that Biggs deliberately ran the moped off the road with his Volvo car in an earlier road rage incident at a roundabout. They said that Liam had crashed into their car earlier on in the day and driven away from the scene. Biggs and Sharpen panicked and ran away from the scene and tried to get rid of their mobile phones. The rider of the bike also panicked and ran away and he later attended hospital with severe bruising to his pelvis. And detectives launched a murder investigation and went through hours of CCTV and AMPR cameras to try to find the silver Volvo S60. Further inquiries were carried out to track the car's movements 
that travelled from Essex to London. Following the hit and run, the pair made their way back to the London area and were arrested on May the 11th. The car has never been recovered. They both denied murder but stood trial at Birmingham Crown Court and admitted the lesser charge of manslaughter. The pair were also found guilty of assaulting the 18-year-old who was also on the bike. And Detective Raja Sanga from West Midlands Police said, Liam's death was tragic and completely uncalled for. He was chased down by the car and it must have been terrifying for him and the young rider. The level of aggression and rage that was used was disproportionate and today a young man is dead because of this. I hope the fact they've admitted their guilt today is some sort of comfort to Liam's family as I know that they are going through a hard time. Liam's family paid tribute to a caring uncle who had a brilliant sense of humour. Liam was a bit of a joker but he always had a good sense of humour and he was very caring. So this just goes to show the fragileness of life as well. And this isn't even getting any better, especially in Birmingham. At 9 o'clock today in Quinton, two teenagers were stabbed by a gang of six who jumped out of a car and made their escape also. Luckily, the two teenagers are not in a life-threatening condition and it seems they will survive the wounds. But it's an exact replication of these two other cases where cars are involved and people are just acting in the spare of the moment. Rest in peace to Liam Mooney and my condolences to his family. Several days ago on the channel, I covered the fact that three teenagers were shot in 48 hours in Birmingham. And today, police have released a statement to say that there were several other shootings in Birmingham. And they have now brought in a Section 60 to try to deal with the violence that is ongoing. None of these stories were covered by mainstream media, mainly due to the fact they wasn't reported at the time they occurred, so nobody could go to the scene. Police said they were called at 4pm on the 5th of January to two loud bangs in the Ladywood area. They came to Summerfield Crescent and they've been told that there was a Hyundai Tuscan vehicle and it had crashed into a wall and men were seen running from the vehicle. Shots were heard firing after the collision and the Hyundai left the scene and was later recovered nearby in Ledbury Grove. They said they received a further call at 5.50 in nearby Nineveh Road. Witnesses told police that two cars were chasing each other, a silver and a grey car and a blue Ford Fiesta. The latter car crashed into parked cars and the occupants ran off. The silver car left the area and officers found what they believed to be bullet holes in the boot of the Fiesta that was dumped at the scene. Finally, ambulance colleagues were alerted to a man being shot in the foot in Rodney Close in Ladywood. The 23-year-old was taken to hospital with injuries that are not thought to be life-threatening and he was arrested on suspicion of a firearm also at the time. A 21-year-old male was arrested also for suspicion of Class A drug possession, possession of a firearm and he's currently in custody. The police say they're talking to witnesses and gathering any CCTV in the local area and they will try to make arrests in the coming days. So really appreciate you joining me for this update coming from Birmingham and please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me online as well at Scar City Studios on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok and Facebook and I'll be back again shortly with some more news. Peace.